and bulimia. Good place to start. Question everyone always has. Well, bulimia, binging and purging. Anorexia, there's also a binging and purging subtype. How do you tell the difference? The answer here is going to be with the BMI because the symptoms are going to be very similar. Parotid gland enlargement, mallory vice tears, enamel erosion, pretty teeth. Um, you're going to have metabolic alkalosis. Why? Well, it's not a respiratory problem, metabolic. And you're going to end up, of course, expelling all the acid in your stomach, leading to an alkalotic state. You're going to have calluses on the back of your hand because you keep shoving your fingers down your throat. Uh, you're going to kind of end up scuffing the back of your hand, not just with the acid, also with your teeth a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so BMI is the big one there. For, uh, for normal people, it's less than 17.5 will give you anorexia. Um, uh, but if you're, if you're young, it's three standard deviations below the, uh, below the mean. Now, uh, there was also a push for recognizing anorexia before certain BMI parameters come up. Um, this can be in people who, let's say they had a BMI of 33 or something, and they were quickly, quickly losing rate, weight and exhibiting all the symptoms of anorexia. Um, you know, uh, restrictive eating, uh, being very conscious about, you know, what you eat, body image, things like hair falling out or whatever. Um, then there's a push to actually categorize people as, as anorexics in that case, even if they haven't yet. Um, uh, hit the BMI threshold in order to prevent, you know, further damage. But, 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 they're not going to test you on stuff like that. Uh, a few different types of anorexia, obviously binge eating and purging, uh, can either be through laxatives, things like uh, Senna, Lindas, or whatever, diuretics are big, but vomiting is going to be the big one, and of course, look for those things that we talked about, parotid gland enlargement, enamel erosion, calluses. Restrictive eating, these are people who only, you know, they'll only eat, let's say, 200, 500 calories a day, a few things of salad. Um, if you go on anorexic forums, you'll get a good sense of how people uh, eat with anorexia. Refeeding syndrome. Well, uh, what happens when you load someone up who hasn't eaten in a very long time with stuff? Uh, insulin spikes. Calcium goes back in. Low calcium leads, of course, to cardiac complications. I've actually seen this. So what do you do? Slowly, you slowly refeed them. You don't go nuts. You don't just pump them full of McDonald's or something. Bit by bit by bit. So on a test question, an anorexic, it's going to be a girl. Uh, it's going to be, she's going to be 17 years old. She's very focused on her grades. She's a straight A student. She's in the cross country team, but she has the most irregular periods. Her hair's falling off. She has brittle bones, maybe a fracture. Um, she has enamel erosion and she has excoriations on her hands and she's very particular about what she eats she only eats so much and she's going to make an excuse for it saying oh if I get too fat you know I won't be able to compete at the top level in my cross country anymore bulimia a little bit different you'll have a normal BMI or will be overweight but it's the same thing as binge eating purging as anorexia of course it's not anorexia because your BMI is a little bit different Binging disorder. Well, think of it as binging purging, but without any purging. PICA. They love testing you about pregnant women and iron deficiency anemia with it. Of course, just like delusions, it can't be a cultural thing. For example, in, in America, we don't eat bugs, but in some cultures, they do eat bugs. So in that culture, eating bugs wouldn't be PICA, but in this culture, it would be. Gender dysphoria. Big difference between transvestism and transgender. Transgender, you actually want to be the other gender, the other sex, or whatever. And transvestism, you get a sexual kick out of it. Think of someone like J. Edgar Hoover. Transvestic disorder, it's where it comes with uh, huge distress. You think of it kind of like OCD, where it's a compulsion. Someone needs this. You know, you need to dress up like this. And if you don't, it causes a huge problem. Of course, transgenderism, you don't think of it as a fetish, or as transvestism, it's more of a sexual thing. Not gender dysphoria, which transgenderism is.
dysfunction. This is a great one. Um, of course, think of the different things that can cause, you know, lack of erections. Beta blockers, antidepressants, which is fine because you're, you're already depressed because you have sexual dysfunction and then you take antidepressants and it just gets worse. That's, that's kind of a funny thing. Atherosclerosis, not getting enough blood everywhere. Same thing with diabetes. You get hardening of everything, except what you need. Uh, low testosterone. How can you tell if someone has low testosterone or if it's just a psychological thing? Do you still have nighttime erections? If yes, well, it's not a testosterone thing. Maybe it's a psychological something, rather. And of course, neurogenic problems, spinal cord injury, that's huge. So what was the big thing here? Difference between uh, transgender and transvestites. Gender dysphoria is, of course, the difference. Uh, it's the, the one that you think that you are versus the one that you actually are. And, uh, you know, we'll see more of that as uh, the years go on. Um, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, just going between anorexia and bulimia. Just remember, if you're binging and purging in either of these, you'll have similar symptoms. Don't refeed too fast, you'll have cardiac complications. And keep in mind culture with PICA. But also remember, iron deficiency, anemia, and pregnancy are huge.